I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Friday June the 3rd brought to you in part by Nora Myson by Norbrook. Nora Myson 300 LA has a 33 percent lower volume dose per injection than the 200 milligram per milliliter oxytetracycline injectables. It's effective, economical, and readily available without a script for roughly another year when they're going to change all the rules next summer and you're going to have to have a script for pretty much everything. You need to look into that and be prepared for it. But for more information go to norbrook.com. An unexpected launch. Now we saw that launch so we had Monday off on Memorial Day. Tuesday uh, your cattle futures were down pretty good uh, triple digits and then for no apparent reason on Wednesday they shot sky high we expected they'd fall back out of bed on Thursday but they didn't they kept coming and and corn was down big earlier in the week but on Thursday corn was only down a penny so we can't completely blame it on that and uh, the the last CFTC report that came in and that's been several days ago the level of managed fund longs uh, was low in relation to commercial shorts. So we're thinking that this uh, this big gain here, this rally is legit. And it's coming from somewhere and, and evidently these uh, these managed funds have, have flip-flopped and come on the long side. Can't imagine anybody else coming in there on the long side and we just put so much damn pressure on our cattle futures uh, through hedging. Now I think some of that's backed off on your feeder cattle because so many people are, are using the LRPs now but likely your insurance companies are coming in there and and, and taking those uh, short hedges you know just to offset their investment in those LRPs but still uh, we're thinking that this might be a legit deal especially since uh, your corn uh, was fairly unchanged on Thursday and your feeder cattle futures especially were still really uh, higher but uh, just, just this week, or in the last two days, your feeder cattle have gained $7.82. Uh, live cattle, that's the August contract. August contract on live cattle up three seventy four dollars over the last two sessions. Now we'll see what happens on Friday. Probably be some profit taken on Friday, but you know, that's okay. We're, when, when it seems the dimmest, when it seems like we don't have any hope of gaining any ground, uh, we know our show lists are getting bigger, uh, you know, we've got uh, record numbers of cattle on feed, everything that goes along. Of course, there's all kinds of bullish fundamentals out there, especially as we go forward to offset that. But it seems like when it's a dimmest, that's where uh, we get some, uh, some bullishness uh, on the technical side out of nowhere. And that's absolutely what's happened here. And you think, well, why has corn backed off so much, uh, sitting now at around 7.30 a bushel? Well, the wet conditions are bearish for corn, uh, but bullish for beans. So why is that? Because, uh, well, beans only have 66% planted as of the last report, which was over the weekend. Last weekend, and planted acres were only uh, 39%, while corn was 86% planted and 61% uh, emerged. So uh, if it gets really wet, it's good for the guys that have their corn in, not so good for the guys that are trying to get their beans planted. But uh, beans don't have near as much to do as what your corn does. But let's look at your board for Thursday. June live cattle futures up 82 cents at 133.62. Uh, still setting at a, a pretty good discount to what they're selling fat cattle and we're in the, the spot month right now what they're selling spot cattle in uh, in the northern plains not necessarily the southern plains because 135 that wouldn't even real hardly be enough uh, uh, difference to, to matter there and not much of a basis for the guys like it was those basis jumpers on Tuesday that jumped out there and and grabbed that 135 which is what stuck the market there but Northern Plains still selling mostly over 140 so that's a big discount with uh, getting into June here uh, for your live cattle contracts for June. August live cattle up 122 at 134.12 back to a small premium to what June is but uh, I think that should could maybe grow uh, further as we continue to stay current in these feedlots and they're continuing uh, to keep slaughter at a pretty good pace. We're expecting this coming week 
to be uh, your heaviest slaughter that we've seen for a long, long time as they're uh, filling obligations there, uh, the Packers are. But your back months on live cattle up 160 to up 215, so we're getting good support on your back months. Feeder cattle contracts August up 322, and man, does that help the guys that uh, didn't get hedged earlier that have yearlings turned out to, to deliver late this summer or in the fall, but that's sitting at 172.95. Might want to get a hold of that, guys. September feeder cattle up 307 at 175.47. Now, if you guys have a hard time believing that uh, your your yearling feeder cattle, feeder steers weighing eight or better, are going to bring 175 and change, you may want, and you've got cattle, you may want to run out there and get a, an LRP because uh, that doesn't happen a hell of a lot more than it's happened for sure. But uh, your back months on feeder cattle up 232 to up 290. Corn futures, uh, Chicago Board of Trade down one penny, as I mentioned earlier, closing regular trading at 7.30 and a quarter cent a bushel. Beans up 39. Like I said, it's really wet right now and going to be over the weekend uh, in the Midwest, and a lot, a lot of the beans haven't been planted yet. But up 39 cents at 17.29 and a quarter. Uh, that was uh, up 15 and a quarter, and and hard red winter wheat, uh, Kansas City, sitting at 11.43 and a quarter there. But uh, let's talk about your fat cattle trading. Colorado confidential. Uh, we just have two packers trading there, so uh, not being able to see any of that information. But up in the northern plains, they're only selling fat cattle a buck lower than last week, so not terrible. Iowa, 3,700 head on Thursday confirmed, but only 10,300 head for the week, so probably going to be some more trading in Iowa here on Friday. But live sales on Thursday range from 139 to 143. Uh, dress sales one, uh, only at 222 in Iowa. Nebraska, 5,200 head confirmed on Thursday, 21,500 for the week, so that's pretty decent trade in Nebraska. Live sales in Nebraska, 139 to 142. Dress sales, 220 to 222. Kansas, 800 head confirmed on Thursday. A little over 15,000 for the week, which is light for them. All at 135. Texas, 1,300 head confirmed on Thursday. 9,900 head uh, for the week, which would, would get them into a robust type of a volume in Texas, no more than they typically sell. But uh, live sales in Texas, largely 135 to some 136. Box beef cutout values were mixed. Choice cuts down 77 cents at 266.65 on Thursday afternoon. Selects up 72 cents at 249.63. Your slaughter, it's a holiday kill. We were off on Monday. 381,000 uh, through Thursday. Can't really compare it to last week, but compared to the same week a year ago, up 56,000. So very, very good there. Talk about what else is going on. On Monday, Montgomery Stockyards, uh, Montgomery, Alabama is going to have another, another one of their video sales with DV Auction. It's a video board sale. It's a Monday at 1 o'clock p.m. They've got nine loads of green grass yearlings on there, guys. Where are you going to find them? you got to go to a deal like that. Pretty good kind of cattle there. Four loads of them from a friend, Eric Smith, who I got well acquainted with the last trip that I took down there, and I wish him luck and hope they have a good sale there. Going to be on dvauction.com. Can view and bid that sale Monday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Central. Let's talk about uh, your, uh, or actually that may be Eastern time. No, I think it's Central time. I think we're good there. Let's talk about your feeder cattle markets, real time index on DV auction. Sitting at 156.38 late on Thursday, and that's up a dollar 13 with uh, some big quotes that I'm going to tell you here in a minute out of Pratt, Kansas. But that 156.38 real time index late in the day on Thursday, sitting at about a three dollar premium to the latest available CME cash feeder cattle index, which is lagging behind like always, sitting at a little over 153. Talk about uh, your big sales on Thursday. Winter Livestock, Pratt, Kansas. Good sale for them. Really, really hot sale. 2,800 head there. 
two to six dollars higher show you this automated market report from cattle market central and i'm not going to argue uh with your kansas uh, federal state market reporters there for once i think they finally called it right mostly because they called a bunch of uh, yearling feeders fancy this week and last week which gives you a fair comparison you, you can't when you have a uh, one week different than the next but they had the same kind of deal last week so you got a fair comparison there and look at some of those uh, weights there in your yearling feeder steers, which is what was the best tested there. And then I'm going to give you some individual quotes out of there uh, for the high quote of the day. But 895 head of eight weight steers in Pratt averaged 855 pounds at 163.24. That was over $5 higher on the weighted average compared to last week, which is a good test because they called those cattle fancy last week. This week they were fancy. Uh, a lot of these uh, were coming off uh, a short graze out wheat there, which is, uh, you don't see much of that. 636 out of your nine weight steers averaged 951 with a weighted average price on all those nine weight steers of 154.01. That was two bucks better. So I'll agree with that trend for once out of there. They also had some lightweight calves that sold really, really well. 69 head little peewee steers weighed 380 at 251.50. Wow, uh, about some individual quotes. How about Billings Livestock Commission, Billings, Montana. Billings Live sold 187 head of 723 pound steers. Must have had some grazing type condition there. Bring 185.50. Goodness. How about Bluegrass Stockyard South, Stanford, Kentucky. Standing in the ring in Kentucky, 60 head of 870 pound feeding steers. Bring 160 80 Got to put 10 or $12 worth of freight on those guys, at least, to get them to a commercial feedlot area, unless they go straight up north there to Eastern Corn Belt feeders, which is likely, and they've been really aggressive, as we've talked about the last several visits. But the best quote that I saw anywhere, your National Beef Wire top quote of the day, indeed comes out of winter livestock in Pratt, Kansas. They had that one consignment of eight weight steers, there was four loads of them coming off short wheat, graze out wheat there, which uh, there were not a lot of uh, graze out wheat pastures out there with wheat bringing so much and it being, being so dry around everywhere, but they was lucky to have it. But fairly green condition there, all black, pretty good kind. Uh, four loads of them, average weight 839. They bring from 171 to 172.60. I was uh, texting back and forth with some guys that were there, uh, including Steve Stratford, and, and he told me, he said, I keep coming in second on them. He said, I really like to have them, but I just can't stretch out that far. That's when we agreed right there that it takes to somebody to push the man that's going to buy him to find out how far he'll go. That's what's wrong with our fed cattle market. There's nobody to push. Uh, all the big fours are working together. And your regionals are just trimming around the edges there. But if we could get more negotiated trade, and if they were mandated to buy a minimum percentage of their cattle in a negotiated manner, they would be hungry for some cattle. The other packers would be hungry for some cattle. We would find out how far we could get the fed cattle market on a weekly basis with somebody wanting them and somebody not afraid to push. Cattle Price Discovery and Transparency Act, guys. we got to have it. That's your feeder flash for Friday.